I do now. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready, Brian? Yeah, we are. We're good. Whenever you would like to go, boss. All right. Um, welcome to Good Nerd, Bad Nerd. Um, we are here with a little nerd on the side to bring to you um, one of our favorite nerd actors, David Hewlett. Um, Thank you very much. The angry nerd. The angry <laughs> nerd. Good nerd, bad nerd, angry nerd. <laughs> Um, David is here with us as um, we are promoting um, one of the new, probably revolutionary things that's coming out on Hulu this month, State of Sin. Um, and it is um, it's a, it's a graphic no motion graphic novel, 3D um, presentation that um, tells an incredible story that we're going to get talking about with David. Um, and he'll, just, you know, he'll tell us a little bit about it as well from his perspective. Um, but it is perhaps um, our future, our dark, dark future, as we continue to pioneer and empower technology in our lives. So let's talk a little bit about it. Brian is here with me, of course. Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> and then David is here. David, how are you? Very fine. Very fine. Yes. So, uh, David, uh, the state of sin... Um, it's it, like Les said. It's a it's a kind of this motion live action format. Um, Everyone has such a hard time describing it, and I, I completely I, I do the same thing. Where people, it's like, what is it? I was like, I don't know. It's like a comic that moves, kind of, you know. So <laughs> well, I guess the first question would be, what what was the decision to go with this format? Be you know, before we really dive into the story, because the format is the first pe thing people are going to be kind of. Uh, Talking about responding talking about to experiencing. Yeah, yeah it's. I, I mean, well, I, I mean, I was not a part of this. I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was just a very pretty face in this. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you know, in talking to Jay and the guys at, at Smoke Bomb, it just they, you know, they came in with this idea of doing a comic, basically a web comic, um, you know, with some kind, with some sort of form of motion, make give it a little bit more, make it a little more exciting than just a, a sort of standard. Sort of comic book, um, and uh, and then so they they went ahead and they shot all this incredibly elaborate photographs and brought in set pieces and did all this stuff and then found themselves with this massive hard drive of images <laughs> that they had no idea what to do with, what to do with basically. Um, I mean, Jay was joking that uh, that uh, you know next time next time we might as well just make a movie because it it was just so <laughs> complex what they had to do. Um, but I, I got to say, I, you know, at first I was very skeptical because it, you know, it is so strangely limited because of the stills nature of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, I think we did a really good job of sort of creating this sort of hybrid, hybrid form of, 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 of web comic. I mean, for want of a better word. Um, and of course, what immediately happens is then. It goes to Hulu, and then they start talking. Now people are now talking about maybe doing an actual series, like a live action series of it as well. Yeah. Um, but I think, and even just as is that format, it's very interesting to me as well. The idea that you can get you can get these incredibly complex stories and you know grandiose sort of imagery out there, you know, without having to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars that uh, that Hollywood does on these things, you know. And I would I would agree with you. Like I started out very skeptical um, about the format because I thought, well, it's just going to be a barrier between me and and the story. Yeah. And I think slowly what begins to happen is that washes away, and the the story is so incredibly uh, intense because mm. it's so you're so well packaged. I mean, it's eight episodes, five minutes that is shot. Um, and the cliffhangers are there, and you're kind of like, ah, yeah, I need back. to get to the next one. And so you begin yeah. to kind of appreciate this um, in a different way. I think the same people might have been around back in Disney's time saying, hey, Walt, really animation? How are we really going to believe these people? How are we going to really have empathy towards these characters? Well, and it did, I, like you, it took me a while to get into it. Like the first episode I was like, eh, maybe, you know, and then the more I watched, the more I sort of, I understood, you know, that there were certain um, sort of uh, almost like visual tricks that they used, and they would use it over and over again. And then you sit, you go, oh, great. okay, so this is motion, this is a conversation, this is so this sort of a, a language that they have. They have to almost create a language with this as they go along. So it does, 
But I do find it's not a, it, you don't sort of drop in and immediately get sucked in. It's, it's, it's like a comic book. It's, it's a bit of work. You know what I mean? And yeah, I think I, I do. I agree. To me. Yeah. It's a good description of, of that for sure. One of the of things, course, as soon as you see me, you're sucked right in. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> One of the things I do like about that format, though, is it it does give you uh, emphasis on things that the audience does need to to be aware of. Where, yeah. you know, in a in a full live action, things can be missed or kind of swept away. But here, it's like this is important. This is what we're talking about. So there's a lot of emphasis on the things that the audience needs to pay attention to, mm-hmm. and, and the fights. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the fights. Yes, I, this, I, mean, I love almost the like cooler slow motion punch, punch coming at the guy. You could do it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try to get both of them. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, so okay, well, let's talk a little bit about this story. We're on Skype, just so everyone knows that we're actually punching each other on we're Skype. Punching each other. The video, of this, if we can do it, to get that up, will be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's talk a little bit about the story itself, because I think I'm pretty sure people are now uh, they're very interested in what we're actually talking about. Um, it's the, the story, as we said, it's called uh, "The State of Sin," and that's S Y N for those of you mm-hmm. listening and not looking at us uh, on paper. Why would they, why would we be on paper? I don't know, but sometimes we. There's a paper edition of this podcast as well. There's a paper edition of this podcast. <laughs> Um, so State of Sin, and it really takes place in a futuristic society. Um, and do you guys say how far in the future? Is it 2033? They Something might, like but that? I probably wasn't paying attention. <laughs> unless, I had, unless I had the line, I probably not a clue. <laughs> it, was just, <laughs> it, was like a it was like a visual. Um, it's very but basically, dystopian kind of, you know. Yeah, it's a dystopian future. future technology world. rules. There's the haves and the haves not. It's separated by a wall, um, and the masses uh, are being controlled um, and by by opiates. And this this synthesis um, that they the, for the the tech giant uh, silo scene, silo sense, um, mm-hmm. has created this new drug of the future that is able to control people. So you kind of have the opiate of the masses kind of thing. So it's very um, it's very dark in terms of how people are treated. And then you play Aslan Kane. Aslan, uh, yes, the, the, pleasant, the pleasant scientist, who's sort of more businessman than scientist in a way, I think. I think he's, he's let the business side of stuff take over a bit. Um, Those corporate bastards. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> like, you know, sign me up. <laughs> right? It's a good paycheck on it, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> so you guys, uh, uh, so the story is about... Um, Obviously, this company, Silosense, um, and it's it also stars uh, Jewel State alongside. The lovely it. Now she's worth seeing it for, right there. Yeah. She's amazing. She's beautiful. She's talented. We've loved her ever since she was in Serenity, um, yes. and she's really added to uh, fandoms and you know just not just visually, but she's a great actress. You know, she really brings oh, a lot of amazing. empathy. Well, she's on The Killing now. She's yeah. Playing. She's playing someone's boyfriend or husband on The Killing. I don't watch television. I'm too old, it seems. But uh, <laughs> I do watch television all the time. But I tend to be watching more geeky stuff, I think. Really quick, how was it working with Jewel again? Um, I love working with Jewel. From Stargate. We just abuse each other the entire time, <laughs> basically. So it's, it's you know, it's uh, people can't tell whether we absolutely hate each other or, or, or you know, or inseparable because we, we just basically abuse each other the entire time. It's, it's kind of like having another sister. <laughs> I I just basically abuse her exactly the same way I would I would abuse like Kate or any of my other sisters. So that's a great uh, working relationship, uh, <laughs> especially when you're playing some pe- people who are so antagonistic uh, right. towards each other. Um, yeah. But no, the the warmth of the, uh, of your chemistry really does come through because there is you are playing a character that is trying at least at the beginning to straddle the fence between mm-hmm. uh, a person who's caring in her life, caring for her in her life, and somebody who's trying to take advantage of her life. And, yeah, I mean, who knew that those, you know, sticking those things on babies' heads was a, was a bad thing? You know? <laughs> hey, Never yeah. crossed my mind. I've got a kit. If I could control them, uh, hands down, it'd be done. Hey, I'd have one of those things on mine in a second. Yeah, totally. <laughs> How uh, old are you? Uh, I've got a four-year-old and one who has just officially entered the uh, Terrible Twos. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible twos than the effing threes, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Those, uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to know what comes next. So that's a combo. That's definitely a that's a, that's definitely a a one two combo there. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, mine's six and has just got into Minecraft, so he's like my favorite thing on the planet. Ah, nice. <laughs> uh, but it's, it, I mean, I think sort of sorry, bringing it back to uh, away from fatherhood for once. Um, <laughs> I think one of the um, one of the fun things about about what they they do with this with this thing is that they be, because you're not limited by the usual filming require. Like normally, budgetary restraints would stop you from creating such a, a thoroughly um, uh, sort of such an extensive set piece like a city with a wall around it mm-hmm. um, and giant hollow screams showing um, showing uh, 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 Rainbow Sun Franks as, as the preacher, who's fantastic, by the way. Yeah. I love, I love that. Um, uh, so it's it's really fun to see that kind of stuff happening where you where you're you know, my mind starts going because I start going, wow, you could do all sorts of things. Like it's very neuromancer, and of course, neuromancer is such a hard thing to do in any other form other than a novel because it's just it's mm-hmm. so, such an extensive and such a sort of costly endeavor. Yeah. So I love the way they've done that. Um, and um, yeah, I wish I wish I was more involved in it. I wish I, other than just showing up and <laughs> getting punched in the face and stuff. It's uh, you know, as always, I want to get my I want to get my hand in there as well. <laughs> How did you get involved? Uh, with the project, I don't, I don't entirely remember. I mean, uh, I think it was just a call to the agent. I mean, I think it was just a, you know, someone, someone. Uh, I guess because it was a Toronto-based thing, um, and with Canada, it's always good to have Canadian talent in it because of various different sort of tax, tax, and uh, I mean, naturally because of my talent and good looks. But as well as that, we're also I think Wait, you're Canadian. <laughs> I'm Canadian, exactly. Yes. This yeah. podcast is over. We've stopped. We're done. <laughs> yes, I apologize for our 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 mad uh, our mad defense ministers from. Uh, what am I apologizing for? That was kind of fun. <laughs> hey, it's awesome. Yeah. Him, him, and Rob Ford. Get them together in a room. That'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, that'll be lots of fun. <laughs> so uh, uh, they they clearly picked you because I mean you you have a lot of nerd cred. I mean your 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 resume like just screams. It speaks for itself. Yeah, you've got countless uh, nerd properties that really your name on the on the show is going to bring a, a big audience. I hope so. Yeah, I mean that's I I, I mean it's just it's, it's I mean I was always my joke was always that if I wasn't sort of attending I mean I'm at conventions for Stargate and stuff, but the reality is I'd be there. I'd be there, you know, if I had a regular job too. You know, so it's I, I'm I'm definitely I've definitely got many nerdy pursuits. Um, I just, I love it. I mean, and science fiction is one of those things, I think when science fiction is done well, it's such a great escape, you know? Um, and I, thought, I always read science fiction, Doctor Who was a big big thing for me. Um, and, and the fun there was just the idea that there was, that there is something else out there or there could be something else out there. Equating it to your own, you know, to your own sort of environment is, is, is fun. I mean, we're, I'm working on another another thing right now, which is a, which is a half hour comedy sci fi stuff, um, and um, uh, and and also like reading. I mean, you guys read uh, David Eggers' uh, The Circle? Mm-hmm. You read that? Yeah, I'm just I'm just going through that right now and quite quite enjoying that sort of take on stuff. So it's yeah, the, I I tend to get I'm definitely attracted to the nerd, attracted to the nerd. You guys are very attractive, is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, we cut up just for you. Yes. Uh. This conversation is not awkward for me. I'm used not to it. Very uh, good. We're all very confident in our in our, in our yeah. as well. <laughs> the bad nerd must always be confident. Yeah. You know, that, the evil it's doctor true. must always be confident until the rug is torn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, it's true. Evil is always confident. It's very true. Yeah. Question: uh, <laughs> Comparing the two doctors you played, I mean, Doctor Rodney McKay and now Doctor Aslan, you have got the good nerd. And the bad nerd, basically. Which which did you enjoy you seeing go. more? The good, you know, good or bad? The thing I loved about McKay was that he was both. You know, he was he had. It wasn't beyond him to play the system. I mean, he sort of, you know, he he did tend to 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 make the wrong decisions, which I think is the fun of him. His all of his foibles and all of his, um, you know, mistakes. Were, were part of his charm to me, um, and uh, but, but you know, flawed characters are always much more fun, much much more fun. So usually the evil guys are great fun because they're just so you know innately flawed, and yet somehow I I never thought of, I never really thought of McKay as a good guy because he he, I mean 
he was only good when he had to be. <laughs> you know? like, I feel when, like it was, saved, when it saved his life, you know. It was, like, it was forced onto him, and I think he would take credit for stuff that really wasn't his, you know. <laughs> Really wasn't. I mean, he's only he was lucky in many situations. You know? Yeah, I really. Yeah, they really do try to um, redeem McKay more in Atlantis than they did in SG One. He was really he was he was somebody that you enjoyed because he was um, you know it, the the antithesis of Amanda Tapping um, in 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 all of her pursuits, and um, mm. so it, it was it was good fun to kind of have the two of you there to kind of face off because it was. There was, chem- there was like suddenly there was oh here's really nerdy chemistry in a different mm-hmm. medium than you had between all the other characters. Well, and she was I so think that's noble. why they picked up that character. She, and she well, thank. I mean, that's it was. I mean, I, I love the guy. McKay is uh, he's a fantastic character to play. I mean, uh, you know, Amanda was a big part of that too, playing um, Samantha, uh, because she really, like that first episode, she let me play. I mean. There's a weird kind of a sort of a sort of jockeying for position that happens on shows where you sort of you come in as a guest star and you're a guest star. It's like you know right. there's there's your leads and then there's these characters that come in once a week to sort of explain things and make you look good. And <laughs> she just she really let me be offensive to her <laughs> her character. Yeah. She let me you know she and you know and 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 let me go with it. Whereas I think a lot of a lot of of other actresses would have had a hard time with that because it really is, you know, trying to play straight man to that kind of stuff can be very, that's just, you know, it doesn't always, it doesn't always pay off that well for the other actor. Right. So, uh, uh, and she let, you know, she let me show off basically. And it was, it was really, you know, so I've, I've always very much, I mean, she's also just a lovely woman. I mean, in general, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, you know, if she, if she, if she joined the military, she would be doing exactly she'd be doing exactly that herself. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, McKay is McKay to me always. My my fear was always that they were going to water down McKay, that he was going to become too much of the sort of the oh, isn't that cute mm-hmm. stuff? And so there was always to me that just walking that line of you know, well, yes, you know, you can feel sorry for him and you can sympathize with him at times, but the reality is. He's still not the most pleasant or easiest person to live with. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife can attest to that. <laughs> she used to give me 15 minutes when I got home. She said, "You got 15 minutes to lose McKay, or you lose me." <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I'd come back home going, you know, go, 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 you know. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is just kind of out of my own personal curiosity. I, I, you know, I asked all, but you know, you have all these sci-fi roles in your past. Do you have a, do you have a favorite? I mean, because you, you have a, a lot of kind of smaller independent films. Um, I think my probably personal favorite of yours is the film you did, uh, Nothing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. My wife's uh, favorite of yours is Cube. I mean, that, oh Cube, yeah, which is I, also Vincenzo. That got her into sci-fi, really. Um, but I mean, do you have a favorite? I mean, because you do have such a wide. I, I mean, I loved playing McKay. I, you know, he was just, he was just an awful, awful lot of fun. And it was different every week because it was science fiction. It was just, you never knew what was going to happen. I mean, you know, you know, you're playing, you know, a complete mental breakdown one episode and then a, you know, a studly rod from another dimension. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it was such a variety of, of stuff there. It's almost not fair for me to compare them to the other ones because, that one role with so many different ones. Right. Um, I loved Cube. I mean, I really enjoyed. That was the first. It was the first role where I sort of. I hadn't. Where I, I didn't feel like I was trying to be someone else. It was a almost an experiment in, in. In in trying to sort of, make the performance as small as possible, because um, mm-hmm. it was such a, sort of melodramatic. Yeah. You know, concept even. And so I really wanted to try to make it very sort of subdued and calm, which is very not me. In that situation, I'd be the first person to panic and get sliced. Like, I'd just be, oh, my God, and then, you know, falling apart. Um, so it was kind of fun to play almost a lead in a way. Yeah. Like a, like a you know, a sci-fi lead. Um, it probably won't happen again. But, uh, but it was, you know, it was, that was definitely one of the ones that I really enjoyed. And then nothing was just... Nothing was so much fun because it was just a bunch of us goofing around. I mean, Cube 
we had assumed the cube wasn't going to do very well because it, it was said rather unauspicious, inauspicious. Um, you can correct that later. Um, <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Uh, it had a, uh, you know, when it first came out, there wasn't a huge amount of, uh, of sort of buzz about it or anything. And um, so we figured it was just going to be, you know, it was just going to disappear the way films do. And, and uh, so we started working on like the lowest possible budget concept we could come up with. And Vincenzo and Andrew Miller and myself uh, sort of got together literally in a yurt in Ojai, California, um, which is a nightmare for me because it's just outside. Yeah. You know, this insects <laughs> and animals and just not, not pleasant for me in any way, shape, or form. And uh, uh, I, mean, I remember pulling this giant tick out of my leg during the, the writing process. Um, anyways. Uh, and... <laughs> So we just tried to come up with what's the smallest, po like how do we put people in a room and yet make it appealing to us as a, you know, as nerds, you know, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's that, it's the, it's the whole idea of sort of uh, low budget, high concept stuff. And so we sort of came, what would happen if we had the Midas touch in reverse, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we had a lot of fun with that. We actually did a, I, which to me is still almost, I almost preferred to the film was this original, we did a video in three days of the entire movie. Really? Like as a sort of pre-visualization thing in an earlier draft of the script that, that Andrew, uh, that Andrew, his writing partner wrote. And um, uh, so we did a whole, we shot it all like on a little handy cam and put like green ponchos on to pretend we didn't have bodies and <laughs> sort of did bad chroma key to get rid of the, 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 the bodies and stuff. Did a lot of this stuff, you know, that's yeah. just the head. <laughs> And it was so fun, like so ridiculously funny, but also highlighted a lot of issues with the script. Uh -huh. Just a lot of talking back and forth that wasn't working and this stuff. And and so it, and then all of a sudden Cube started doing really well and the budget went up and up and up. And all of a sudden we're like, oh, great, well, now we can actually go into the nothing. Like originally <laughs> we were going to be stuck in the house and couldn't go outside. And um, so it sort of expanded with that. But Vincenzo's just a, and Andrew Miller, uh, just incredibly creative, fun, sort of, uh, you know, I've, I mean, they'd be friends of mine forever. I, I just, you know, Andrew, uh, Vincenzo and I went to, to high school together, and Vincenzo basically, uh, sorry, uh, Vincenzo and I went to high school together, and Andrew I met up with when we were like 16, and we've just been basically working together, friends together since. And that's the, my, my sort of disappointment with the film industry was that it wasn't always like it was when I was working with my friends in high school. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you get on these big sets, and there's, yeah, there's, you know, there's coffees and donuts and things like that, but you're, it's such a tiny slice of the project that you're a part of. Like, you come in, you learn your lines, you don't try not to trip over anything and, or hurt anybody, and um, remember your lines. And then you go home, whereas when we first got into this, it was all about, like, it was everything. You're holding a light, you're holding a boom while you're trying to do your own lines, and, and <laughs> you know, I, I remember running... Uh, you know, a, a teleprompter for an actor on a on a show. It, I, it's I much prefer the whole being a part of the whole thing, which is which is why I've started you know writing and directing because I just I, all of a sudden I get to go back to that point where I got my you know I got my hands in everything you know so, for good and bad. <laughs> um. So you mentioned uh, you're a Doctor Who fan, and so we have mm. to ask classic Who. Or knew who? I, I'm afraid because I'm so old and crotchety. I, um, you know, <laughs> Tom, you're never going to replace Tom Baker for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, I was, I got into Doctor Who with with the with the Pertwee Baker combo. Mm -hmm. Like that was the my first big trauma was, oh my god, it's not John Pertwee anymore. It's some funny looking guy with a, you know, you know, with that curly hair and a big nose, and it just he just I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> so I remember being like. This is raw. Like, where's, where's my John Pertwee? And then being thoroughly enthralled with Doctor. In fact, I would say Tom Baker was the one who turned it into ridiculous fanboy obsession. Um, mm -hmm. To the I had the scarves and the hats and the, you know, jelly yes. babies. My God, I walked around with those fucking jelly babies. Excuse my language. In the, <laughs> like these, you know, and I didn't want to give them away because you couldn't get them in Canada. So I would go and buy them, and they'd like try to give you a plastic bag of them. You're like, no, 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 it's got to be in one of those paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for months, I'd walk around with these ancient, like, yeah. oh. crystallized yeah. jelly babies. You give those away to the people that you don't like. 
That's it. Um, you know, I thought that was cool for dates and things, and somehow that was going to, you know, jelly baby. Um, but but I've got to say, of the new Doctors, I, I, I was a huge fan of, uh, of Matt Smith. I really – what I liked about Matt was that he – to me, he was – a perfect blend of the old school sort of Tom Baker type approach, mm-hmm. slightly, slightly not angry, but you know, just a little bit of an edge to it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then new because the uh, uh, irritating little brats only like half my age. So, you know, I just thought he did a great, I just thought he did a really great job with that. And I'm really looking forward to, um, uh, to seeing what happens now with, um, Peter. Oh, God, I blanked out his... Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi. Capaldi, yes, because I love... I mean, that guy... I've loved... I've watched that guy's career since, you know, he was in Local Hero. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which if you haven't seen, you should see. It's a great film. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, Thick of It and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm curious to see, you know, basically with his casting, uh, I feel like it's moved back into the realm of... It's, it's almost gone more old school again. Not yeah. just because of his age, just because, you know... What he brings that, as an actor. Yeah, I and I, I so I'm really curious to see that. I, I um, you know, but I, I got to say though, I thought it was very smart with Tennant and um, and Matt Smith that you know they brought in a whole new generation of, of people and you know and women, you know, more mm-hmm. women as well. Is that you know, uh, you know, so um, which is always a good thing, you know. So yeah. Women, um, women are always a good thing for me. Women are great. Great women. That's First great. Place ever. <laughs> so what do we have to do? I mean, because we want to get you on Doctor Who. I mean, if Mark, <laughs> uh, Mark Shepard can be on it, okay, and play an American, yeah. why, why can't you be in there? That's uh, right. I should be there. Definitely. Well, I have to go to England first, don't I? <laughs> yes. Uh, we actually have a place in England. My wife has a, has a house in England, uh, and... Um, that we go to all the time, and she she keeps threatening that, that we're we're going to move back there. So 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 we'll see. Um, it's so funny. I there's a couple of shows. I mean, I'm at the stage now with my ego uh, okay. that uh, that I don't I don't really like guest starring anymore. Like I, I don't because you come in for a day and you're a stranger, and unless they're a particularly fantastic role. Although I I gotta say I saw um, uh, Browder Browder on Doctor Who was extraordinary like just did a amazing job i thought um i actually tweeted like how blown away because at first i was like who is this guy i was like oh holy crap that's browder he's amazing <laughs> um so he did an amazing like he took what isn't necessarily the most interesting of roles but he just did a beautiful job with it i thought mm-hmm. so basically i can't be a doctor because i'm just not that good <laughs> <laughs> So I, you know, I could probably play a Sinatra now. If I just shaved the hair off, they mm-hmm. wouldn't even have to do much aesthetics. Yeah, you know? exactly. Did I get that right, Sinatra? <laughs> you know, watch this. Yeah. So I'm, well, I, I'm starting a campaign. I think you should be on Doctor Who because a guest star role, like Peter Capaldi did, could lead to one day you being the Doctor, and I think that's a go. fitting part of your career as Doctors. Um, if they and, decide, yes, if they decide to go truly old and crotchety, <laughs> maybe. I'll be back, you know. I'll be yeah. I'll be back in the in the first run. <laughs> they reinvented it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. My other campaign is got to be. I don't know if you know about Pop Funko, um, those vinyl figures at all. Uh, no, but they're all that? they're all the nerd rage right now uh, for collectibles. Um, and I'm, I'm googling how you speak. Um, but basically, they they take figures from different uh, shows and different places, uh, different movies, and then they, um, they put them into these, these kind of figures. So what are they called? Pop? They're, and they're, uh, the, the, the company's called Funko, so it's Pop Funko. So it's popular culture kind of references. But we want to see uh, the characters of Stargate, and especially a Rodney McKay, so I can have one up here on my shelf with my Donatello and my Batman nice. Beyond. Right? <laughs> it's perfect. Nice. Yeah. I, look... Any kind of action figure, I'm I'm entirely behind. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you'll be a collectible. That's I I, I would I love being a collectible. <laughs> uh, hey, well, I I used to call our our Stargate action figure the um, the Stargate uh, McKay in action figure because all he basically did was just just slowly get larger <laughs> around the waist. 
Um, so, uh, real quick, uh, as we're you know coming to the end of this, what are you what are you currently working on? What's your next project? Uh, what should we be looking forward to? It's always the question of these. What is my next project? I'm always working on like 50 million things at the <laughs> same time. We've got um, we've got a, a film called Debug, uh, which uh, is uh, stars actually Jason Momoa from the uh, uh, from a little series called Stargate. You might have heard of. Um, <laughs> And uh, which is kind of a fun science fiction. Uh, it's basically sort of a science fiction horror. Final Destination in Space, basically, was, was the original pitch. Um, so it's kind of fun. Uh, sort of evil computer turning against its, uh, its, its owners and basically turning its owners against themselves. Um, so we had some fun with that. Um, and uh, so that is, we're just basically, the effects are, are, there's like 900 digital effects in it. So we're trying to, trying to sort of move that along. Um, and, um, and also, as I say, we've got this, we've got this half-hour uh, sci-fi comedy, which which we're hoping to work with, uh, actually with the uh, with the State of Sin guys um, on, uh, which could be kind of fun too. Which would be a very uh, um, a very silly, fun take on the sci-fi genre. I think um, I've written a pilot for that, and I'm working on another couple of episodes because I'm not sure exactly how to how to put it together, but. Uh, but that is the goal now. Is is uh, with and actually with a fun role for myself this time. I've actually <laughs> I've, I've caved and said I want to be on TV again. So uh, <laughs> so uh, yes, that that could be that could be quite fun as well. Well, great. We'll definitely uh, keep an eye out for that because. Oh please, yeah. Well, I'll bug you again when we got something to talk about. Yeah, that sounds. Good. <laughs> um, so okay, January eighteenth, State of Sin uh, will be on Hulu. Um, is there? You, you mentioned earlier that they wanted to see talk about continuing it past the series. Is there, are there any plans for that? Yeah, I think I think one of the sort of the secret ulterior motives to this is for them. I mean, again, maybe maybe I'm mistaken, but the sense I get was that you know they're they're open to the idea of moving it to you know to sort of more traditional platforms as well because um, I think they've sort of proven that it's got a good. It's got a good sort of story. It's got a good set of characters, and I, I think there's some kind of hope to moving it. Moving it from there, so it's just, again, it's just another way of telling a story, and I, I think, you know, I really, uh, you know, I, th I think it definitely people should stick with it. Like, watch a couple of episodes and and get the get the lingo down, and it's uh, and it's 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 fun. I really, uh, I, you know, and, and I would I'd love to see it expand beyond this as well. I mean, you know, although when I say expand, in a way, it would almost have to contract because I don't think you could you you couldn't sort of physically do as much as we do in the right. in the um, in the actual sort of web comic or Someone's got to come up with a good word for that. Someone's got to have a good word for whatever this thing is. Right. So someone was saying it's very Japanese, and apparently in Japan they do a lot of these kind of these kind of things. But I, I uh, maybe there's a term for that that, they, that there is. Maybe, maybe we can borrow another one of their terms. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, I'm excited. I think the show has a great hook, um, just in terms of the the content. It's very dystopian, and so I think people are really into that kind of stuff, um, especially in sci-fi. We just love going to the dark side of who we are and who we can be. Yeah. And then, uh, but you're right. The characters and the story and all of the the sense and all of that silent. Uh, it's just it's just it, it hooks you. And there's all these little hic uh, hiccups that that the characters have to go through. And but I think story by story, that the, the issues of, well, that's unfamiliar to me, washes away, and you're suddenly engaged in a really intense sci-fi story. That's oh, really well written. I think well, that should be said. It's really well written. I, I think, yeah, they, I think they did a fantastic job with it. I, I, they've also apparently, and I've not played it, but uh, I've heard good things about the app as well. Apparently it's really fun. You these little puzzles to solve and all sorts of stuff. I don't know if you guys play with that. but I, uh, I'm like uh, six puzzles in. Some of them are pretty tough. All right. Are they? <laughs> yeah. I've, I have a six-year-old. I don't get anywhere near my iPad anymore. <laughs> it's just, it's not. And if I do, it's like Jurassic Park Builder or something. Very so, you know, uh, but uh, but yeah, apparently that's another one to look out for as well. You know, so yeah, yeah, it's totally worth Thank it, you. and people should definitely uh, check that out because yeah, right, yeah. it expands the story yeah. online. It so. does expand the story. Yeah, there, there's a there, there's more story elements that you you go from puzzle Unlocked. puzzle with story in between. Oh, nice. So, so it can, it, you know, after you've seen the episodes, the the app really does kind of uh, build on the world. Um, so wait, so so watch the, so watch the show first, and then go to the app. Is that the? Well, if if uh, here's a plug for the premium app. Uh, you can uh, watch all the app. You get all the episodes if you purchase the premium app right now. Mm. Um, so you can play as you're watching, kind of going along in tandem. Um, 
but you know, it's it's kind of a side story. It's it doesn't they don't necessarily intertwine. At least at the point I'm at right now, uh, yeah. okay. some of the puzzles are getting tough for me. Um, There's just not <laughs> enough time in the world for me to geek out as much as I'd like to. I stay up really late problem. to get all this in. Yeah. Well, I, look, I got into Magic the Gathering, and I was, you know, trying to hone my skills with the iPhone app or the uh, the iPad app. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Two o'clock in the morning rolls around, and Jane's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, <laughs> I must defeat the Goblin King. And yeah. then... <laughs> oh. Well, I think that's our uh, that's our show. Um, yeah, for... Sorry, you guys didn't get a word in edgewise, did you? <clears throat> oh, that's perfect. That's, people people like are it. tired of us. <laughs> that's why they listen to us. They're people don't come here. People come, don't come here to listen to you. Yep. <laughs> uh, um, it was a, it was really a great time uh, talking with you, David, about uh, State of Sin and all of your your nerd fun. Um, so thanks for joining us. <laughs> a pleasure indeed. Yeah, anytime, guys. That's really this is this is great. Um, uh, so, Brian, say something. Yeah. So, th- thanks again. Um, we're definitely going to keep a, an eye out for your the the upcoming that comedy project, the comedy sci-fi, because that sounds awesome. Um, oh, well, debug first. Debug should be there. Should, debug, should be seeing debug first. Okay. The other one's in development. So, okay. God knows, I've made the mistake of development before. So. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, for good nerd, bad nerd, this has been uh, a little nerd on the side. Uh, I'm your host, Brian. And I'm your host, uh, Bless. And once uh, again, thanks, David. thank you, David. Uh, a pleasure indeed. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And we're out. So this is uh, this is us, and we're saying, where nerd is the word. I make him do it every time. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 <laughs> I trick him every time. I, I just don't want to do it.